if there's one single word to describe what living with dementia is like, the word is frustration. They kind of got this idea in their head of what dementia is, but they're not giving the person a chance to explain how it's affecting their life. I know a lot of people with dementia really want to offer something and say something. Um, and, and sometimes it's, it's, not, it's not accepted or it's not taken on board or it's not given the opportunity to be expressed. The way people are spoken to and look and facial positions, all these things are really important. What you're about to see is a film about a theatre production, The World Turned Upside Down. We take a look at what it's really like to live with dementia or to care for someone with dementia. The idea came from a conversation between Professor Linda Clare and director Paul Jepson. They were talking about using theatre to share research findings in a way that could make a difference, also about how unrealistic a lot of portrayals of dementia are. Linda runs Ideal, and Ideal is 10 years old. It's a research programme about improving the experience of living with dementia. A group of people living with dementia and carers called the Always Group help guide Ideal. You'll see some of them in this film. The World Turned Upside Down uses evidence gathered in the Ideal Research Programme. Over 1,500 people living with dementia have taken part, as well as 1,200 carers. What you'll see in the film are scenes based on these people's stories. But of course, no individuals are named. The stories and the discussions with the Always Group help the actors to understand how to portray the experience of living with dementia. We chose the theme of communication. Our aim was to explore where communication can go wrong and to find ways of communicating better for everyone involved. In this film, you'll see three actors improvising scenes. They are of key points in life for people with dementia, from first noticing symptoms to diagnosis and right the way through to moving into a care home. The actors play multiple characters. You'll see the rehearsals, you'll see the performances, you'll see the audience discussions, and you'll see the audience's ideas tested in the scenes. The film acknowledges the challenges of living with dementia and offers hope about communicating and caring that is relevant for anyone affected. It's also an exploration of the process of learning about how to portray the experiences of people living with dementia and the personal impact this had on the actors. Uh, my, my name's Claire Pentecost, I'm the producer on The World Turned Upside Down. And my name is Paul Jepson and I'm the director. I'm Jill Cree and I'm one of the actors. Uh, I'm Sally Geek and I'm one of the actors on the project. My name is Steve Bennett and I'm an actor on the project. Yeah, hello everyone, uh, my name is Keith Oliver, I live in Canterbury and I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease almost 11 years ago. When the moment happens that you forget something or you're struggling for something, what, what do you feel is happening inside? And people with dementia will talk about a fog, a brain fog. I got the sense that people were anticipating that that was a long-term experience for someone. It often isn't. And, and, and I use the, 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 the story of traveling along a road in a car and you're going through patches of fog so one minute, the visibility can be really quite reduced. Other times, it's reduced and makes you very, very cautious and, you know, more, more mindful of the difficulty you're confronting. And other times, it's clear. And then you proceed forward as you would normally do. I, I think Keith doesn't, he talks a lot about fog, yeah. uh, fog and, and things like that. Finding the truth in where they go. Because as an actor, you're finding the truth in what you're saying. But in this, you're trying to find the truth in what you're not saying, where, where the brain's going. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a, a set of scenarios, and each of these scenarios can be taken in various different ways. And we'll show you one way. We'll have a bit of a chat about it, and then we'll see if there's some other outcomes that can, that can happen from those scenes. So, so practically speaking, hopefully that's quite interesting, because it'll mean that you have to think about um, intention and objective. So when did you um, stop? driving no no I haven't have I haven't well I sort of have stopped uh, I sort of have stopped because obviously because of this not being able to see the speed I did 
I, I wasn't mentioning and that. And the children, and the children. And my, and my son and that. Um, we, we were out one day with the, in, in, the, in, the, in the car with the kids, his kids, not my kids, his kids. And um, I, I probably went a little bit fast. And he said, Dad, look at the speed you're doing. And I, he obviously clocked something. That, and and then, then it all came out that I said I, I had this issue with um, numbers. And uh, There are things that are textually interesting that are happening. So rhythmically, what's interesting is when you find you can't find a word or you get lost and you come back. Mm -hmm. That's starting to feel quite real for me. And that's a kind of, that's a kind of early stages thing, isn't it? Yes, yes. So that's where we, we, that's where we are with early stages. So that's how we're going to need to speak when we're early stages. And then, and then it, gets, it gets more intense. Yeah? yeah, yeah. My wife taught me and reminded me to use my mobile phone to take photographs when I'm out and about. Familiarity is, is really important. And I will then try and use prompts like, the, the, the mobile phone to help me um, navigate. Dementia is much more than memory. That That is, again, very, very typical where the brain, the eyes are seeing something, but the brain isn't processing it anymore. So I'd like you to meet Steve. And this is his kitchen. And this is his daughter. And his daughter's called Sally. And Sally's popped down to see Dad for the weekend. Morning, love. Morning. OK? Yeah, do you want a cup of tea? I'd love one. I'm just uh, popping out for five minutes to get a paper. So? Yeah? Have you seen my keys? Huh? My keys. I thought I'd left them there. I, I can take you if you want. No, 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 it's OK. I just, uh, I'm sure we came in last night from the meal. I, I always put the keys there. I, that's very strange. <laughs> you sure you haven't seen them? I took your keys, Dad. Why? Because of what you said last night. What did I say last night? Dad, you forgot where you were while you were driving. Oh, Sally, please. That was a five-minute blip, I told you. I was just... Things went a bit hazy, that was all. I stopped the car and for a couple of minutes I couldn't remember where I was. That, that was it. Oh, that was it? Yes. Dad, you could have been in an accident. I'm not going to be in... I've spoken to the GP. The GP assures me I should be OK to drive. Should be OK to drive? That's not... You are OK to drive. Well, I've got a diagnosis in a couple of weeks. We'll take it from there and see what happens. Right, OK. And until then, you're not driving. What? Until you get a diagnosis and we know what's going on, you're not driving. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Sally, please. I need my independence. I need the car. You're not being ridiculous. You are. What? You forgot where you were while you were driving. Oh, for goodness sake, girl. As I said, it was five minutes, nothing more. I won't have this, Sally. I don't need you coming down giving me this nonsense. Right, listen, my girl. I'm going to count to three and I want my keys on the table. One. Dad, I'm not five years old. You can't put me on the naughty step and expect me to behave. Two. Three. Keys, Sally. No. Put my keys on the table. If you don't, you can just leave. You can go. Are you serious? Absolutely. Fine. But don't call me when you get in an accident. Can you have the house lights up, please? OK, so fine, that's the first one. We're all improvising, by the way, so... Actors, technicians, me, we're all improvising. So that didn't go so well, did it? Why? Sorry? Why is it confrontational? Because of the situation and, and both, both of them were... Well, really, the daughter could have maybe handled it slightly differently, and her father felt that she was taking his independence away from the choice. Um, even though she was doing it for his good, it should have been dealt with in a different way. It was a bit disrespectful 
to her father. So, so it's, to do with, it's to do with agency or agency being taken away from a character, is that right? What does she take away? And how does she take the, key, the, the, the choice away? Because she took the keys away without discussing it with him first. Fine. Off you go. Try again. Morning, love. Morning. You okay? Yeah. Do you want a cup of tea? Yes, please. I'm just popping out for five minutes to get a paper. So? Yeah? Not seen my keys, have you? Uh, yeah. Dad, do you want to sit down a sec? I've got your keys. Huh. OK, why? It's just after what you said yesterday. It slightly scared me. What did I say, love? That you forgot where you were while you were driving. Oh, oh Sally. It's just a five-minute blip, that's all. I was just... went a bit hazy, forgot where I was for a moment or two. It was nothing. I, I spoke to the doctor. The doctor assured me everything's... Sort of fine. Yeah, OK, I, that's sort of fine, but I just think maybe until we know what's going on, maybe you shouldn't drive. But, Sal, I can't not drive. I need the car, love. I can't get anywhere without the car. I mean, I'm here this weekend. I can take you places. I Sally, I think you're overreacting. I really do. OK. Um, I just... I'm just worried you might get in an accident or... I'm not going to get into an accident, am I, love? I'm sure it was just a one-off. I've got this diagnosis thing in a couple of weeks. If they say I can't drive then, well, then I won't drive. OK. Maybe, um... Can I come with you while I'm here? Just in the car with you? It might put... I mean, I'm, maybe I am overreacting. It just put my mind at ease. Well, if it makes you feel better, certainly. I mean... Yes. If it makes you feel better, you can drive me this weekend. Amazing. But I'll need the car be... Well... I'll tell you what I'll do. Until I've had this diagnosis in two weeks' time, I'll take the bus. Really? You never take the bus? No, it's full of old people. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I mean, I know. I'm probably overreacting. I just... I just worry. OK. I get it. OK. That's what we'll do. OK. Lunch? Yeah. Early days when Mum was still driving, and I'd come home and the car wasn't in the garage. She had been driving back from wherever she was shopping and got a little bit confused about where she was, and she'd just park up and, and walk home. And somehow walking, she could get home walking. I was going to say, like, it's, very, it, it's clearly not an issue that only one person deals with. It deal, you affect everyone around you, whoever's caring for you, whoever cares for you in any way. Like, it's very challenging. And I, my grandfather had dementia and it was very, very hard to have a conversation with him. Uh, and personally, with, with the car scene, the first scene, like, I, we, I had like, an experience in the car when like, we almost had an accident because he was you know, not in the right state of mind. We didn't really know what was going on at that point. Um, and it's, it's, re it's really good the way that, the, the, that it's, it's been presented because you do, the person with the dementia does get quite, like almost, like not anxious, but they get quite stressed with themselves because you're telling them they've done things, you're like, well, I haven't, but they realise that they have. Well, let's go to the doctor, shall we? Can we go to the doctor? Mr Bennett? Yes. Come on in. Thank you. Take a seat. Thanks. My name's Dr Forster. Hello. Had a referral from your GP, uh, Dr Sims? Uh, Dr Stims. And you're at St Leonard's Medical Practice? No, 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 I'm, I'm at St Thomas. Right. So, yes, I've had a referral from your GP from some initial tests that you've done. Yes. Uh, so today I'd like to do a medical history with you. Then if we could get you booked in to do some blood tests, and some urine samples, and then we'll get you booked in for some memory tests as well. Right. Okay. And then depending, obviously, how they go, we'll then book you again, maybe in a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so. Right. And how often do I have? I mean, really, it depends on how quickly we get a diagnosis. At this stage, we're just ruling things out rather than ruling things in. So it can take a while. 
But uh, <laughs> I've got a job. I can't come every two weeks. Yeah, we do do early mornings and evenings. Right. OK. Right. So are you OK to carry on with the medical history? Y yes, I thought I did one with the GP, but... Uh... Yeah, we do one too, in case we miss anything. Right. OK, so do you have any medical conditions? No, only what's um, going on here. Any historical medical conditions, whether treated or not? No. Any chronic illness or disease in immediate family, that's diabetes, cancer? No, nothing. Are your parents still alive? Uh, no. And what ages did they die? Uh, my, mother was, um, my mother was 81 and my father were... Huh. Sorry, I, um... My father was, um... Rough ballpark is fine. Yes. Sorry, uh... Late 70s, I, th I think. Do you smoke? I haven't smoked for 30 years. Do you drink alcohol? Occasional glass of wine. How many units a week? I, I, I don't really know what a unit is. Two and a half units to a large glass of wine? Right. Um, five, s s s s seven and a half units. I Any medications? No. Any allergies? No. OK, and as far as the uh, onset of symptoms, when would you say you first started to notice? Well, as I said, uh, uh, it was a few weeks ago. I, um, I, I'd, I'd been out driving and uh, well, I, I'd been hazy and I, I stopped the car and I, I didn't quite know where I was. And, uh, and I, it didn't last long. But, but, but uh, I have had another incident recently. Right. Yeah, I, different. I was... Um, I, I went to reach for the cutlery and it, 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 it w w wasn't quite where I thought it was. Uh, right, would you say that's reflex or eyesight? I, I, I've got no idea. Any head trauma or accidents? No. Any headaches? No. Any tightness or pain in the chest? No. And how would you say your mood is? <laughs> Well, it's not so good since I've been here, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just not... Right, that's fine. Uh, if you could just go down the corridor onto your left to the nurse's station for your blood sample and urine. Uh, I'm doing that now? Yes, please. Right, OK. Any questions? Uh, well, yes, I do. I do. I do have one question. Um, uh, my daughter's concerned about whether or not I should be driving. Uh, legally, you don't have to let the DVLA know until you've had a diagnosis. Right. At this stage, you don't have a definite diagnosis. No. But I would say, considering your first episode was in a car, no. Right, thank you. Thank you. To your left. Thank you. What, what's the doctor not showing? Uh, I was going to say compassion as well, and she's being very quick when she should... She's cause... quick, so the tempo thing comes up again, and yes? Um, the eye, con eye contact is also good, very, good very points. lacking. So what's, what's wrong with the eye contact? What's wrong with her eyes? Well, every, every time she says something, she's either looking at her screen, and yeah. then, she, I, then she flicks over the end of her sentence and looks over with a quite disconcerting face. And she, it shows that she doesn't really care, and straight off the bat as well, you know, the only line that she actually said fully to the other character was just like come in and sit down and then the rest yeah. of it you're looking at a screen not really caring. Yeah. Well, well done. Uh, well done. It's comic because it's sort of quite, quite extreme, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible that that could happen. And I'm, I'm seeing a few nods in the room. So, so people have some sense of being on the receiving end of some of that. Maybe the doctor's stressed or tired or whatever. What's interesting is the impact that it has on the scene. You, you notice it, 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 makes, it makes him stressed, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I love it. It's absolutely excellent. Right, do it again. So I want you to start again. Um, feet flat on the ground, please. Sorry. Thank you. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> Hello. All the, time, uh, all the time you're taking notes. Yeah. I want to see you taking the notes. And I want to uh, err on the side of, uh, you know, as professional as possible. Yeah. So, uh, get, so don't, uh, don't uh, as little sympathy as you can. OK. Yeah? So she's absolutely professional. Let's, let's be fair to the NHS and, and have another go. And, uh, and, and this time, the, the rule is that you can have as much empathy for your patient as is possible within your professional. Sure. 
your professional relationship. So you can't tell him anything that's, you can't reassure him about something which you can't reassure him about. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Come on in. Thank Take you. Take a seat. Thanks. I'm Dr. Forster. I'll be your specialist. Oh, hello. I'm uh, Steve. Hi. Righty. Uh, so I have a GP referral from some tests that you've done. Yes. A couple of flags have come up, hence why you've been referred to me. OK. Um, and I've got a Dr. Sims, is it? Uh, Stims is the T. Stims. Oh, probably just a typo from the other end. And can I just confirm your medical practice? Yes, St. Thomas. Ah, OK. Right, so, today, ideally, what we'd like to do is if I could do a medical history with you. Right. And then we would like to do some bloods. Okay. Not keen on bloods? <laughs> not, not, not my favourite, no. No, well, they're all friendly here. Um, and then we'll have a urine sample as well, and then we'll get you booked in for some memory tests. Okay. And then, dependent on the results from that, you'll then come back in maybe a couple of weeks or a month or so, or, and then just ruling things out at the moment. I mean, hence the bloods and urine. Yes. Make sure that we don't have any infections and that sort of thing. It's, it's just I have a job. It's difficult. Yeah. It? Yeah, no. Um, so we do some early morning and late evening surgeries. Right. Um, I can also do a GP letter for you, like let you get your GP to do a letter for your employer. OK. Yes, great. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Yes. Great. So, I'm going to do a medical history with you today. I thought I did one with the GP. Yeah, it might feel like you're repeating yourself a bit, but we just want to cover all bases, make sure that we've got a full record for you, because, uh, you know, you are in my hands now. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. Lovely. Right. Do you have any medical conditions? Uh, no, well, apart from what's happening now, no. And any historical medical conditions at all, whether they're treated or...? No, no. no. OK. And any chronic illness in the family, such as cancer or diabetes? No, or no, nothing. Do you mind me asking, are your parents still alive? No. no. And what ages, please? Uh, mother was 81 and my father... <laughs> Sorry. Um... Oh, don't worry, I often forget what ages my parents are. Yeah, I, I told the GP the other day. Um... It can just be a rough number, don't worry. We, I can go back through your records. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, I, the, the, the late 70s, I think. That's fine. Lovely. Uh, are you on any medication at all? Uh, no, I'm not, no. And have you got any allergies? No. Lovely. Do you smoke? No, not for 30 years. Well done, you. Thank you. <laughs> and do you drink alcohol at all? Occasional glass of wine. Okay, days. And so... As far as we'd say, like, an onset of symptoms, when would you say you first noticed anything? Well, that was a few weeks ago. I, um, I, I, I'd been out driving and, um, well, this is going to sound a bit strange, but uh, I got this sort of haziness around. A bit sort of Star Trekish, I suppose. <laughs> and um, so I stopped the car and then uh, I just didn't... I just didn't recognise anything. I, 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 I mean, I knew retrospect where I was, yeah. but I just, nothing made any sense to me, and that, that must have lasted for 10 or 15 minutes, I guess. Yeah. And sorry, did you say that was three to four weeks? Oh, at least, yeah. A yeah. bit, bit longer, I think, yes. And would you say you've had anything since, any reoccurrence? No, not like that, but I have had a couple of incidences where um, I've, I've, I've gone to pick things up, cutlery and, and, and pens, and um, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's not where I where I think it is. Does, right. does that make does okay. that make sense? No, no, no. Um, is, would you say it's sort of like a reflex thing or is it that your sort of the, the eyesight and where you're seeing it is different? I, 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 I don't I don't really know. It's um... that's OK. Don't worry. Um, and any numbness or tingling in the face? No, no, no. Lovely. And have you had any head trauma at all? Any Never. Headaches or anything like that? No, no. Any high temperatures? No. Lovely. And Lastly, really, sort of, has your mood changed at all? I've, I've felt down since it's happened, if I'm honest. I've, I've not felt as good as I normally do. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's playing on my mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's OK. Right, as I said, I can't say how long this is going to be. We are in the ruling out phase at the moment. Sure, sure. Um, in the meantime, if you've got any questions. Uh, I just have one. Um, my, my daughter's um, concerned about me driving. Yeah, so 
Legally, you don't have to tell the DVLA until you've had a diagnosis. Right. You're obviously not in the phase yet where you've had one. Um, I mean, you've got here that obviously your first episode that you've noticed is in a car. Yes, yes. Um, I understand, you know, you might need the car, that, but I would just err on the side of caution with that one in case it is a trigger or anything like that. Right, right. And also in the meantime, I would say some people have found really helpful and actually sped up the process is if you could sort of record any time that you have an incident. Yes, yes. Uh, so we can sort of keep a log of it all. Sure, sure. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can do that, certainly. That'd be great. OK. Thank you so much. Pleasure. If you could go down to the nurse's waiting room. Right. Um, for your blood tests and urine samples, please, and then we'll get you booked in for a memory test. OK. OK? Yeah, thank you. You've been very right. helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Just down to the left there. Thank you. All right, thank you. I mean, straight away, it was like, you know, welcome through the door, how are you doing? Yep. And it was very considerate when they were asking about parents, saying, do you mind if I ask? You know, yep. it was just a lot more considerate than the first performance. Yep. And, and substantially, what's different? What does the doctor get out of it that she didn't have before? Um, he's a lot more cooperative. He's more cooperative, so she learns more, doesn't she? Yes, definitely. Yeah. He feels more comfortable, so yeah. he speaks up more. Yeah, she learns more, doesn't she? Yeah. Which, uh, when, we, when that happened in the rehearsal room for the first time, we went, oh, of course, makes perfect sense. But, but because cause it's part of it, isn't it? The, the history is important. So it's quite a simple scene, but again, it, it, it spins a bit. There's no substantial difference, but you go out of yes. one feeling absolutely livid. Yes. And you go out of the other feeling a little depressed. Yeah. And a bit shocked. Yeah, less than that, I would have, I would, yeah. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, just feeling, oh, OK, well, they're, they're going to do stuff. Here we stuff. go. Here we yeah. go. Let's, let's, get it, oh, let's get it going then. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is purely and simply the attitude of the, of the practitioner, isn't it? It's, it's sort of like the opposite of the relative. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because the relative needs to slightly remove themselves. Yep. Or remove their own emotions onto it, I suppose. Yeah. <coughs> I think you're right. That I, I think you're right. It is different. The, the, the big difference between the professional and the, um, the relative is that the relative, <coughs> has to, the relative has to live with the relative and the professional doesn't have to live with the patient. Yeah. So I'm going to introduce you to another family. And it's Jill's family. And Jill is joined by her son, who's called Tony, and they're in a country house hotel. And her daughter is driving from a long way away. And this is a family lunch. And Jill has summoned the family to their meeting because she has some news for her children. And it's uh, something she, you know, she wants them to be with her so she can talk to them about it. Off we go. Where is she, Mum? You know as well as I do how far she has to come and what the traffic is like on the motorway. We've been sat here now an hour and a half. <sighs> Three cups of coffee, I'll be peered all the way home. Please. Can't you just tell me what it's all about? I'd rather tell you together. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, thank you for not helping me one little bit. Hi, sorry. Oh, sorry right. I'm now if you're here. Hey, Brett. Oh, great. In a good mood, as per usual. Seriously, why is it like going back 50 years every time you come down to Devon? Really? And the sat nav always says four hours, but really, it's five and a half. Oh, dear. Well, anyway, you're here now. Yes. That's the important yes. thing. And I'm I desperate for a coffee, coffee, actually. Um, oh, excuse me, yes. Oh, do you have dairy alternatives here? <laughs> Great. Can I get a flat white with oat milk, please? Thanks. Sorry. Mum. This isn't going to be any easier for me than it is for you. Uh, best and worst will get out of the way. I haven't got cancer, and I'm sorry, but I haven't won the lottery. But I do have some fairly serious news. Oh, thanks. Could I get some brown sugar? Thank you. Several months ago, it was pointed out to me by a very close friend that I was forgetting lots of things that I hadn't noticed. Um, silly little things, like 
asked her my best friend's name. I met her in the street and said hi, because I knew I recognised her, but I couldn't remember her name for Toffee. And there was a day when I went out to go shopping and left the front door keys in the lock. Silly little things on their own, but put together, it meant a trip to the doctor. And from the doctor to a psychologist and then to a specialist, did you know and that she was doing all of this? Long story short, please let me get there. I've had a diagnosis of dementia. Oh, now, gross. I know it's a shock. And yes, you will say, I should have told you already. I didn't want to tell you any sooner because it could have turned out to be nothing. Yes, but it has turned out to be something, yes, hasn't right. it? Which is why we're here now. Why did you do this on your own? Because... Why did you let her do this on I knew nothing about it. You live here. Oh, well, you're going to have to move back as well now. Absolutely not. I can't. I've got a job. Well, how the hell are we going to deal with this? I Am don't I... know, but we're going to have to think about Excuse homes or something. Me. She can't live on her own. Am I still here? Here's ah. you two squabbling like a couple of infants over a toy. Pause. It's laughable. Pause. How are the kids coping? Oh, brilliant. Uh, they're doing brilliantly, aren't they? So, 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 what, so, so when you say textbook, what's the, what is it that what's textbook about it? Well, it's they're thinking about it's their emotional reaction to it, isn't it? Without thought for her, you know, their lives. That's it. That's version one. So version two is um, is uh, the smothering one, isn't it? Control-based smothering is number two. That's yeah. all right. Are you all right? We'll be, we'll be round. We'll be here. We'll be round work? all the time. No, I'll no, get a yeah. carer to come into the middle of the day. It's all right. They can it's, call right me. it's right. It's yeah. right. Do, 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 ah! do you want to? <laughs> and I will climb the wall. Could you try and just be a bit more sympathetic to your mother, please? Let's do. Please. Could you just? Could you bear to tell them again? Would that be all right? Okay. And let's go. Um. Right. Long story short, I've had a diagnosis of dementia. Now, I know it's oh my a... Oh, God, Mummy! Now, yes, dear, all right. It isn't the end of the world. Are you going to be OK? Yes. Well, for quite a long time, I hope. We're it... here for you, whatever you need. Look, yes. we'll, we'll do this together, whatever yes. you need. Look, I brought you both up to be independent. I've never pushed you into jobs you didn't want or tried to persuade you to over-educate yourselves or anything like that. I've let you choose your path in life. Yeah, and we are here yeah, yeah. for you. I can move Excuse back. Me. You can go in and look can after I, uh, Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I think in both scenarios, um, they're quite emotionally fueled yeah. um, by their own emotions and their own situations and they need to sort of set themselves aside for a moment. And say, yeah, yeah, so, so, so we're controlling again, aren't we? We're controlling it. And why are we controlling it? Why are we controlling it? Because we're upset. It's really, really important, this, I think. There's, there, when we've been working for about a week and a half uh, on this, or about a week or so, I, you know, it just, it, it started to make sense to us. The thing is, it's a small word, care, for a big, big thing. And caring is very, very, very hard. Because what you have to do if you're trying to care for somebody is you have to not allow your own emotions to condition your response. And we have to own up to the fact that actually we all do it all the time. It's just that if you're dealing with someone who has a diagnosis of vascular dementia, it's kind of a bit selfish, so it's funny. But I do think one of the reasons why we laugh is that we know that we get up to it ourselves. It's like yeah just being too sympathized because she's just trying to tell them how she feels about it but yet yeah, they're just kind of like going crazy and the worst thing you can do is make someone feel like the situation is worse at that moment so if you were playing either of these characters what would you be saying to yourself what would your activity be um i'd be less self-involved yeah. they clearly don't hear her they're more um self-interested and don't really understand her needs emotionally. Yeah, very good. So what are these two playing at the moment? What is their action? They're on the same action. What is it? It's a bit panicky. Yes. Um, it's too much, too many words. They're not really giving them a chance to explain and explain how it's affecting their lives. They kind of got this idea in their head of what dementia is, but they're not 
giving the person a chance to explain how it's affecting their life. So, so if I was to kick myself into activity and I was either of those two actors, what I'd say to myself is something like, I make myself feel better by sympathising with my mother. Yeah? And so what you realise by that is I make myself feel better by sympathising with my mother is not that far from I make myself feel better by controlling my mother. Jill stays at home. And Tony pops in to look after her from time to time. <laughs> Mum! Yes, dear? Mum, are you up? Yes. Come on, Mum, in a great big rush this morning. Now, have you brushed your teeth? Yes. Right, OK. Well, look, I'll make you a piece of toast. You can eat it in the car. Is that OK? I thought I'd have breakfast at the cafe this morning. Well, you can, Mum, but I'd like to know you've got something inside you. But come along, please. I'm in a rush. Get your shoes on. I'll make the toast. <sighs> Mum? Yes? What are you doing, Mum? Brushing my hair. Right. Mum, what do you want on your toast? M marmalade. Marmalade. Right. <laughs> right. <sighs> right. <sighs> Come on in, Mum, please. Let's move. Okay, mum, 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 no, 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 not those shoes, please. Use the slip-ons. I'm going to wear my lace-ups. They're safer. Mum, I'm worried to death about you tripping over the laces. Please, would you wear the slip-ons? Shane at the cafe said, if I tie the two loops into another knot, they can't possibly come undone. So it's perfectly safe, OK? OK, fine. Come on, please, let's just go now. OK, right, now, where's the mobile? Uh. I had it last night to set the alarm. Well, what have you done with it, Mum? Um, it might have slipped under the quilt. It's under the pillow. Oh, right. Mum, it's not charged. Um... Wait, wait. Where's the charger, Mum? Is it still plugged in? No, it's not. Oh, for God's sake, Mum, what have you done with it? I don't remember. Mum, it's in the waste paper bin. However did it get there? No idea, but come on, let's go, please. Right, that, okay. right stair lift, come on. No, no, no stairs. Doctor says exercise, right? OK, stairs, just, just move, please. Come on now. Please, Mum, I'm going to be late. Come on, please. Two more, two more. One, two. There we go, right now. Right. There's your toes. Grab that. Do not get it on the car seats, please. What about a coat? Uh, I think the radio said it might rain. Right, Mac, then. Mac, right. Yes. There we go, come on, let's go. Now. Thank you. Thank you. The thing that really gets my goat when I'm out and about is people kind of almost treat their loved one as if they're a toddler. And my favourite worst one is when they're getting ready to go, if you're in a cafe and they turn to their loved one and say, do you want to go to the toilet then? Because it's demeaning, I think. My way would be maybe five minutes before we were getting ready to go, I would just say something like, I think I'm going to have to go to the loo before I go. And that would just live, give her time to sort of for it to percolate and to think, well, Actually, maybe I should go too. That was interesting. I, I, the, 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 and I, and I, I'm aware of that with my dad. It's, it's so easy to get frustrated. God, I love my dad to bits, but occasionally it, it does my head in. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm there, you know, three times a day, and sometimes it's just like. I phoned my brother up and said, I'm, I'm, I've walked out because I'm going to bloody. <laughs> going to lose the plot here. You know, it's, it's, and I do understand that totally, and it's, yeah. Actually, hearing that's made me feel a bit sort of, um, a bit bad about myself, really. What is it that he's doing which is not helpful? Bullying. Bu bullying. And, and, and... Treating her like a child. Treating her like a child? Not rushing her? About him. Sorry? The day's about him more than it is her. About him more than her. So, so we come back to some of the same things, don't we? We're just, we're, we're just getting into situations that are getting a little bit more dangerous. Uh, do you notice her closing up? And that's something that, that's, what's that to do with? That's that, what, well, why is she closing up? Why is she? protection, isn't it? You know, he's, he's getting at me and I'm protecting myself. So there's this sort of fear, quite, quite a lot of fear happening. Anxiety. Anxiety. Go with anxiety. Yeah. 
He's reminding her of her problems. Reminding her of her problems. I thought what was really interesting as well is pretty much the whole time he was in the house with her, he wasn't in the same room as her. Yeah. So he wasn't actually paying attention to what she was doing or what she was saying or any of her actual needs. It's like he he decided what was going to happen before he showed up and went about doing that without actually conferring with her either verbally um, or like with body language or anything like that. And he wasn't able to sort of pick up on any of the stuff that she was doing that maybe would give him a more comprehensive understanding of her situation. Yeah. Okay. And and just just so we're fair, just so we're fair to him, uh, the, the, the suggestion is that that this has sort of happened by accident a bit, you know. And and I, and I think that's something that I don't know if people relate to that, but I think these situations do happen a bit by accident. I mean, I don't think people necessarily choose to be a carer, but it's it's his mum. You know, what's he going to do? Was that how you'd like to care for your... Um, his intentions are to help, but he's just, in the end, he's just stressing her out yep. by being too rushed and too overwhelming towards her. Yep. Um, there's an extreme lack of empathy and um, he's rushing her and there's no patience. Um, he's kind of ordering her about. And um, I feel like if that was my morning, I would go from kind of having a normal morning to being really stressed out. It's kind of putting her in a position where she doesn't have a lot of say, he's interrupting her. Um, yeah, he's just not really handling it very well. So there are all sorts of problems, lack of agency, uh, uh, stressing, stressing her out. Um, wh wh why is he doing what he's doing? I think it comes from a place of care. But, um, but what's stressing him? Time. I was just going to say, I yeah, think go, it's go. quite stark that we're, we're seeing this now, which seems to us, oh, I can't believe I've ever, I'd ever treat my mum like this. But if it's a routine that happens every day, you yes. just only lose track of what, of what you're saying and, and lose track of the care. The thing about care is it's easy to say that you care. We say, I care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about this. I care about that. I, I don't care. Do I care? I don't know. If you play with that word, it's quite interesting. It's a very small word that we use very, very flippantly, which is in fact very profound. To care for another person is in fact extremely difficult. And it's difficult at the point where caring for the other person involves us not having stuff that we need or want, which is the classic problem with the relative in this scene, who didn't necessarily particularly decide that they were going to care for somebody. They just started doing it by accident. What would have to change about the way you related to her for you to find it less stressful to relate to her if you were the same person is the question. You don't have to answer me, but I want you to see, to see you do the, do the um, scene again. Okay. Mum! Yes, dear? Mum, are you up? Yes, dear. I'm dressed. Mum, I'm really sorry. I'm in a terrible rush this morning, all right? The kids have made me late, so have you brushed your teeth? Yes. Have you? Jolly good. Well, look, can you get your shoes on? I'll make you a piece of toast, OK? Right. Well, I'm just going to have breakfast at the cafe. Well, you can do, Mum, but I'd just like to know you've got something inside you, OK? OK, yes. What would you like on your toast, Mum? Marmalade. Marmalade, OK. I'll make it. Shoes on as quick as you could, please. Thank you. All right. Toast. Butter. Mum? Yes. What are you doing? I'm, I'm brushing my hair. Right. Look, have you moved the marmalade? No. Isn't it in the fridge? No. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll find it. Oh, that'll do. Right. OK, then, how are we doing? OK. Oh, oh Mum, 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 please, Mum. <sighs> I bought these slip-ons for you to wear. I am not wearing bedroom slippers. Mum, they're very expensive shoes. They're 45 quid a pair. I'm worried about your tripping on the laces. I've done the bows in a knot, oh. so they can't come undone. Jane told me that at the cafe. OK. All right. All right. Well, chat about it tonight, OK? All right. Got a dash. I'm ever so um, sorry. Come yes. on. OK. All right. Have you got your mobile? Oh, I think it's under my pillow. Is it? Oh, <laughs> Mum, it's not charged up. Oh, okay. Right, sorry. What, what have you done with the charger? Uh, hey? Uh, 
No. I'll tell you what, don't worry, I've got a, I'm sure I've got a spare one in the car. Come on, let's okay. go. Right, right. Okay. can you take the stair lift? Uh, I'd rather walk down the steps. OK, well, nice and carefully now. We don't want to rush this bit, do we? No. OK, that's good. You're doing well. Very good. Two more to go. One, two. Right, OK, right, right. There's your phone in your bag, OK? Right, yes. There's a piece of toast. I can't find a marmalade, but let's not worry, eh? OK. Please don't get it on the car seats or I will shoot you. Right, come on, what about a coat? Uh, uh, aren't you picking me up after work? Well, hopefully, yes. Well, in that case, I don't need a coat, do I? Well, take a, take a light one just in case. All right. Let's okay. go, then. There we are. OK. So... We we have to honour the we have to honour his uh, predicament as well. I mean, he's got a job and he has to be in a hurry, all that sort of thing. But there's more space, isn't there? It's better, isn't it? I mean, he pops upstairs when he's making the toast. Popped upstairs, he's making the toast, isn't he? Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't take it to task over the phone. You start a little bit. It's a bit easier, yeah. So, so he's decided not to let the pressure work on him. Right. Let's ramp it up. So six or eight months' time, six or eight months' time, he's been doing this six months, eight months. Mum! Hello? Mum, are you...? Oh, Christ almighty, what's this all over the bloody floor, Mum? Hello? Cottage pies. Oh, oh. Mum, no, look, please, I'm in a hell of a rush this morning. No, come on, please. Oh, the oh, kids have made me really, oh, really oh, late. Oh, come on, where, where, let's get you in and brush your teeth. Tony? I am Tony, Mum. I am Tony. Come oh. on. Right, now, come on. Shall I do it for you? No, I can, I can do it. Come on, then, please. I'm it. in a heck of a rush, Mum. Please. <laughs> come on, that's it. Oh, for Christ's sake, Mum, look, half a bloody tube of toothpaste down the sink. Just look, give it to me. No, give it. Here. It's mine. I can do it. Right, OK, you do it. I'm going to make some toast, all right? I now, please, get your shoes on. I've got to go. I will do it. Butter. <laughs> Bloody marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Are you getting ready, Mum? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. <sighs> right, that'll do. Come on. Come on now, please. Please. Shoes. Come on now, please. Slip-ons. No. Oh, don't start this nonsense again, Mum. Please. So you're wearing the slip-on. No, 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 no! Oh, oh do it, you bloody filth, then! <laughs> <laughs> Mum, I'm sorry! Mum... Look, since Sandra's left, I'm getting the kids up. I'm coming round here, I'm getting you up. I'm trying to get to work. I'm back here at lunchtime. I'm back again to put the kids up back here in the evening. I can't cope with it, Mum. I just can't carry on like this. Something's got to give, Mum. That noise. Oh. Oh, no. Hello, love. I didn't hear you come in. Are we going to the cafe? Yes. Yes, Mum, we're going to the cafe. My grandma, when she was quite late into Alzheimer's, my uncle was looking after her and she'd ring up my mum and say, I don't know who this person is, but I know I love him. And because she could still feel that, she was happy that he was there, she felt safe, she would go along with the fact that he was living in her house and he was there, but she could not, for the life of her, tell you who he was, but she knew she loved him. My, my, my approach to individuals was often a professional one. You know, the cognitive side of my um, thinking would outweigh the emotional side. Now that's completely the opposite. It's the emotional um, side of my thinking that far, far overcomes the, the cognitive. I will forget what people say to me, but I'll remember how they make me feel. That's the expression I use. So, um, we, it, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's interesting uh, theatrically to have an endpoint, and that's quite a truthful endpoint. 
it is it's where it's going to go unless other things intervene. Uh, he's not a bastard, that's the important thing. He's, he doesn't mean to do it. So, so what do we have to think about to stop that happening? Sorry, hang on a second. Support network around. Sorry? The support network. Support around. network, yep, thank you. What else? At that point, I think he is a bastard, and that was abuse. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, you wouldn't say somebody who was domestically violent, we, we understand why you hit her or why you shouted at her. Yep. You know, it was abuse. Yep. Fair enough. To be fair to both of them, there's an immense amount of pressure on both individuals. Yep. And it requires perhaps family further away to look in and help both of them because he's in as much need as she is at this point. Yeah. Um, pressure coming from his own family and her. Yeah. It doesn't excuse his actions, it just explains no. them, and some form of intervention needs to go in place that's suitable for both of them. Pass it down to, to the uh, lady in front of you. I think it's coming to a point where the family needs to think about a care home of some sort. A care Because home. it's getting too abusive and yep. too much for everybody. Yeah. Whoever where they, where they can contribute to help her, they can't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd like a, sorry, yep, yes. Um, the thing you've got to think about is the, the family dynamic. It's the, the, the child's responsibility to the parent. Yeah. He's taking on that responsibility. This is his mum. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to let her down, you yeah. know, for whatever reason. And for a lot of people, there is that element of pride. They, you know, they're not going to admit that they can't cope. Yeah. And then, that's when it escalates to something like we've just seen. So it is being, be it for people to feel confident enough to go and ask for the help they need to cope in situations like this. I, I, I find myself wanting to ask people, um, I, I'd, I'd like to know if uh, people feel that a situation like this between two people who basically do love each other uh, is, is, is likely to be happening someone, somewhere at the moment. So those people who think so, I'd like you to put your hands up. I just want to have some sort of straw poll on that. Yeah, so, so we're, not, we're not necessarily doing something which is unrealistic. So it's an important thing to reflect on and to unpack. So there is a, there is a point at which it gets... There, 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 is a, there, there is an end point in the care relationship where the care relationship is completely inverted, isn't it? Yeah. It is actually just abusive. Yeah. Which is kind of quite horrid. Yeah. But it's obviously it happens, and oh, yes, the thing that's um, the thing that's interesting here about it, about this situation is that moving from being relatively uncaring to being relatively caring is difficult because you have to let go of a lot, don't you? Yeah, that's the thing that's hard. Yeah. you have to leave it in the you have to leave it parked in the car. Yeah, yeah. Fear is a really powerful emotion, and when normal things happen, like someone's trying to give you a shower or help you have a shower, there's a fear of the water. It's like it's attacking you. Anything that needs to be done for you can be seen as an attack through fear. You're getting frustrated with her. Yeah. But, but what I also quite like is that you 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 kind of don't want to leave. You don't want to leave because yeah. it's as though you're concerned. I can only talk from my own experience, but my experience, I mean, my, my dad's not got dementia or anything. He's just, he, he's, just, he's very ill from a very bad fall and he's in a great deal of pain. And I've sort of become the carer inadvertently. And I'm not the best person for it. <laughs> no, but I honestly, I, and it's, it's, no, no, but seriously, no, no, I know, but something I, seriously to, not. Something to, yeah, that, that's something and to admit. Because they said, admit, they said the other day, if we could get enough money together, would you be the carer? And I said straight away, no. And when you say you're not the best person, is it because you find the situation because, frustrating? Because I think I have, enough, I have a lot of stress in my life generally, for kids and, mm. and, and all sorts of stuff. One's always concerned about work, being an actor, you know, you, 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 where's the next check? So the, 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 you bring with you more than looking after the person, don't you? I think, well, I, I think what you're saying at the moment is, uh, it, 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 
it's very honest of you, and, but, and, but it's also very humane, because I think that the, 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 thing about, the thing about the person who's put in the position of being the carer is that they're not necessarily dissimilar from you. No, no, the, no, that's that, 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 sort and, of thing. And you, that's, you, why, that, 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 yeah. that's why the scene becomes, has some reality to it. Because and I think, even though the frustration's there, I won't walk out the door till I know you're, he is comfortable, he is happy. Yeah. So that there is a dilemma, and, and I think that must go on all the time with carers. Because I don't think most, most people can't afford to be carers. Absolutely. You know. And they have a life beyond <laughs> that of a carer. So, what do we have to do to change the scene? This is interesting. Go. Uh, make the son less vocally dominant, because he's very interruptive and shouty and loud. Yeah, now, but this is interesting, because actually you can't solve this inside the scene. He's already there. How do you solve it? How do you change the scene? Um, in Steve's own words, something's got to give. Yep. Outside of this scene, outside of this scene. So you have to go outside the scene, don't you? I want to ask them to play it again, and I want to show you something which we found, which I think is possibly a, a, a way to start to, to change the situation, or we think it possibly is, credibly. OK, and off you go. Mum! Mum, are you up? I mean... Oh, Christ's sake, Mum. What's this all over the floor down here? Hello? Is it cutting off? Oh. Mum, please, I'm in heck of a rush this morning. I'm really sorry. OK, Mum? The kids have left me very late, OK? So we need to get your teeth brushed, all right? Right. Come on, then, please, quickly now. But shall I do it for you? Mm, I, no, no, it's all right. I, okay, can, well, I can do it. Come on, then, please, Mum. I'm sorry to rush you, Mum, I really am, but I've got to go. Is that enough? Yeah, that, that's brilliant, Mum, brilliant, that's it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mum, you're brushing your face, brush your teeth. Oh, That's ah. it, right, now I'm going to go and try and make you some tea. Ah. Uh -huh. OK, I just... <sighs> John. Hi, yeah, it's it's Tony, John. Look, mate, I'm I'm gonna need to take the morning off work, I'm afraid. It's uh I've just come to my mum's, the kitchen's a bomb site and uh she's struggling, mate. She's struggling really badly. Yeah, no, I know, I need to I need to look into more help, I know, but uh if I could take the morning off, would you? Great. No, no, no. Leave the emails. I'll sort them out when I get in. I appreciate it, mate. Thanks ever so much. OK, cheers. Mum, don't rush. Don't worry about the shoes. I'll pop up in a mo. Oh. Here you go, Mum. Let's have breakfast in bed this morning, shall we? Hey. Now look. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it, Mum. Don't worry. Oh dear. I'll just lick it off. <sighs> it's lime. I know. I like lime. Look, I've um, I've taken the morning off work, okay? And I think you should stay at home as well. Well done, thank you. So, uh, how, how, how does the pressure how, how does the pressure come off? I think that the, the narrative of this family is of self sufficiency. The mum spoke about that at the beginning, yeah. and and she looked to pass that on, and, and and the pressure came off because he finally shrugged off that family uh, myth of self sufficiency. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? He kind of admitted he couldn't cope in a way. And, and took pressure off. I, and I, I, th I think that's kind of quite moving, really, because I think that's the point at which maybe, maybe people don't make quite so many mistakes. And, and then they have a lovely little scene, and it doesn't matter that she's got some jam all over her hands or whatever else she does. Hello. Sorry. 
quite, I thought he took the pressure off just by allowing himself some time. He did. I mean, that was, I, mean it, I don't know that he was changing family dynamics and things. I think he just bought himself some time to think about what he needed to do. Yes. He's also taking control as well. So it wasn't just about um, allowing uh, external pressures to control him. He, by taking time, he then was able to gain control and then had, was able to have an isolated relationship or a, a, just a, a relationship between him and his mum rather than just the clock has stopped ticking at that. Yeah. What if his boss had said, no, he couldn't have the morning off? If, he had got, if it was a friend of mine, and we're of an age now where, you know, lots of this is happening to our friends, we would be saying phone in sick. Uh, do, do the phone call. Do the phone call again. Off you go. Just do the phone call, Steve. And he says, no, you've got to come in now. John. Hi, it's, it's, it's Tony. Uh, listen, I'm, I think I might need to take the morning off work, mate. Uh, sorry? Yeah, I, John, I, I know how busy we are, I know. Look, John, I've just turned up my mum's. The, the place is a... It's like a bomb site. There's cottage pie all over the kitchen floor. She's struggling up in the bedroom. Look, John. Look, mate, I'm sorry, but something's got to give here. I, yeah, I, know, I know, I know how busy we are. I'm just asking for a morning. That's all I'm asking for, please. Look. An hour then. Yeah? Thanks. Well done. So I, I suspect that the, 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 the game is what side's he going to go on? Where's, what's, he's either going to end up losing his job and he'll stay or he'll end up making a mistake and he'll go. I'd like to go back to our first situation but it's, it's moved on a little bit. So um, we're saying goodbye to Tony and we're saying hello to Steve. And uh, Steve's daughter, who lives a long way away, has popped down for the weekend. Off we go. Hello. Dad, you in the kitchen? Hello, love. Hello. Are you going for lunch? Yes. Uh, I... I, 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 I just wondered if we could have five minutes before we go out. Are you okay? Yes, I'm... Uh, you look tired. I am. I am tired, Sal, yes. I, uh, things are... Things are getting worse. Oh, I'm so sorry, Dad. I am... Um, I had... Uh, I had a fall the other day. I, oh, my God, Dad, what... No, 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 it was... Um, it was... Uh, uh, and... Um, I managed to reach the phone in the hall and uh, I rang um, next door, uh, <laughs> names. Um, oh, Colin and um, Chris? Colin and Chris, and then and, and Colin came straight round and, uh, well, the thing is, Sam, my mobility's bad. And uh, these carers you've got in for me, they, they're lovely people, you couldn't, you could, you, you, you could. You couldn't wish for better, but... Yeah, I thought they were really good. No, I, sometimes they're here at seven o'clock in the morning and I, 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 I don't want to be up at... And then other times I'm... I think I'm up and I'm done and I'm dressed and... And it's 11.30 before they... they, they, they... Yeah, but Dad, I just have to no, call no, them no, and we can get you a set time. Just, just please let me say what I need to say because I'll, I'll, I'll get very confused. And in the evening they, uh, they're trying to get me to bed at... Half six in the evening, it's ridiculous. So, they, we, when I, um, we, we were, um, next door, um... Colin and... Colin, Colin, and, and they, we had coffee, and they mentioned that they put their mother a while back in, into a home, and, and I've, I've decided, Sal, that I think that's, that's, I, I I'm doing the same, I've, um, I, I, they've been very helpful to me and... We're Dad, Dad, wait, 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 we are not there yet. Where has this come from? No, it's... Uh, I've, uh, I, like I say, Sally, I, I really am struggling these days and I, I have a bro brochure. Dad, just sit down. You don't please, need I to can't. show me. Please. Don't, don't, please. All, all I'm trying to say to you, Sally, is that uh, I, they're, we're... Um, I think... Next, next, next week, I think, we, we, we signed some papers and I move in, but I... Sorry, what? I've, I, they've been so helpful to me, you know, and... Uh, 
I'm sure they have, Dad, but what do you mean you're signing papers? Well, well they, they, you have to sign before you can move in. It's what you have to do. Dad, I, I'm so confused. You always said that you wanted to stay here. No, I don't, don't... You always said that you'd want to stay here like Mum. Please don't raise your voice. No, there's no need to shout. It's just... Uh, the thing is, Sally, I, I did want to stay. This... This... This place held many memories for me a long time ago, but now it's just... It's just, it's just bricks, really, now, Sally. But it still does to me. I, I'm very sorry, Sally, but I, I have to think of myself in this instance. Yeah, of course you do, because you always do. No, please don't say that. Please don't be like that. It's just... All I'm asking is, as you're here this weekend, would you be able to get this place on the market for me, please? What? I need to sell it to move, I think. Dad, where is... Where even is this home? Well, it's, um... I... I, have, I think I have a brochure somewhere. It's... Dad, where even is this home? I, I, it's, it's, I think it's near... I, I think it's... it's I think it's... I... Have you been? <laughs> no, I, 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 I believe so, yeah, I think so. I, I, I have a brochure. You have told me nothing about this. Oh, Sally, please don't get cross about it. It's not... It's... How can I not get cross? Colin and Chris... Oh, no, don't... ...know more about what you're going to do in the next few weeks than I do. Please don't blame them. It's, 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 they're just helping me. They're helping me because they're here, Sally. They're here. So they're the ones that know all about it? Yes. Right. Well, I'm going to go and have a chat with them instead. No, no please, Sally, don't... So you have decided to do it because you don't want to be a burden, a burden on her. And, and I've accepted the situation, which I'd never done before. Yeah. I've now accepted the situation. You know what's going on. <clears throat> and by, by accepting it, I can then rationally make a decision of the next step. I've always been angry. I've always been cross. I've always been fighting it. Which is still part of his personality. Yeah. Because when a lot of people, given that level of acceptance, would just drift. Yeah. But he's making a positive out of a whole load of negatives. Yeah. Which feels right, because he feels like he's quite a decisive human yeah. being. Yeah. Well, why, why do we feel a bit uneasy about it, then? <laughs> Sorry? We don't know who's selling them the room and where it is. Yeah. And whether they've got their best interests at heart. Yeah. What, what about what, what about the, what about the daughter? They're both they're quite strong characters. They're both again. suffering from a loss here. This a lot of this is about loss for both of them. Hugely shocking for her, even though he still has capacity to make that decision. Um, so he's losing his home. He's losing his independence. She's losing her family home. She's losing her dad. So it's difficult. Well, it, it, it's a really tricky situation, isn't it? Yeah. Almost impossible for anyone to feel like they're doing the right thing. What I think, what I think makes this interesting is the right thing for whom? Because it has to somehow be the right thing for two people, doesn't it? Otherwise, it isn't really the right thing. And that's difficult, very difficult. It's when you reach a point where you're not sure who should be making the decisions now, I think is really tricky for families. You know, um, my family are going through this right now with my nan, and uh, she's still so independent in so many ways, but there's a fear that she's she, she's not able to decide what's best for her, and do they need to do that for her now? Let's see if we can get them a bit closer. Hello? Dad, you in the kitchen? Hello, love. Hello? Are you going for lunch? Yes, yeah, so could we just... Um... Maybe have five minutes before we go. Are you all right, Dad? Yes, I'm... I'm fine. You look tired. I am. I am tired, sir. I, things are getting tougher, I have to be honest with you. I, uh... I, uh... uh, uh I had a fall the other day. Oh my God, Dad, why... Uh, no, 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 it's nothing, 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 nothing serious. I, um... I, I fell in the hall and, uh, I managed to reach for the phone and I... I rang um, uh, next door, um, uh, names, um, 
Colin and um, Chris? Yeah, Colin and, and, and Chris. And Colin came straight round and picked me up. Fantastic. And uh, they, they stayed and had coffee with me. And um, they, um, I think I've, um, I've got a... No, Dad, Dad, what is it? I can find it. No, it's, 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 it's I, I... They, they, they gave me a brochure. I, um, they, um, they told me... But a, a, a while back, they'd... Um, her... her, her um, Chris. Chris. Her, her mother had got to a stage and they, 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 they put her into a home. A very, very, very nice home, I, I think, from the brochure. But it's, it's, it's got me thinking, Sal, and um, I, um, I, I, I feel maybe it's time I, I, I did the, the, the same thing. Dad, what... I think I need to go into a home. You always said you wanted to stay here. Yes, I did, but uh, the thing is, Sal, my, my mobility's not good now. I, ca I can't even really go outside the house for fear of falling or getting lost. And, uh, and I, 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 I feel I need more care than I'm getting from these, these, these people that you, you've, you've sent in. Um, so I was... Uh, what I was wondering, Sal, if I could, uh, if I could find the brochure. It's all right, I'll find it. I can always ask them next door. Maybe you'd come and look at the place with me. Uh, see, 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 see if it's a place I could, I, I could, I could live. Is this what you really want? I, I, I think, I think, I need, I think it's what I need, Sal. I think it's what I need. So I am. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't. I don't want to say goodbye. No, to I, this I, place. I, I, I understand that. I, I, the thing is, Sally, this is um, this place used to hold a lot of memories for me. I, I can't really. It's just a pile of bricks now. I am sorry. But um, if you were able to, if you have time tomorrow, we could do lunch today. And if you have time tomorrow, we could, if you wouldn't mind, maybe look. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll be a bit selfish, Dad. I, um, if this is what you really want, I was hoping maybe we could look closer to me. Then I might be able to actually see you more. Ah, huh. well, I, 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 I hadn't thought of it. Yes, I hadn't, I hadn't considered that. Yes, please. That that I think would be, uh, yes. I mean, we can look at this place. I mean, if um, Chris's mum liked it, we can have a look tomorrow. Yes. Well, we'll look there tomorrow, and and when when you go home, we could, maybe you could. Uh... I'll have a look at places around me. Yes. Shall we go for lunch? Yeah, I'm starving. Okay. These situations are not uncommon. They're happening day in, day out. There is too little recognition and funding for carers. Bit of a political statement there, but it's a fact. Yeah, thank you. I really uh, found that so interesting and the exercise of trying to improve uh, the relationships and the conversation in the moment. But it strikes me that one of the hardest, most daunting things about dementia is that there's a sense in families from that early diagnosis and memory problem stage that you need to have conversations in advance and about decisions that are so complicated and hard and that you don't know whether it's the do you want your children to be giving your intimate personal care or the moment of going into a care home and those decisions and I think I certainly felt, and we all feel really ill-equipped to have those conversations for a time point which is, you know, we don't know how far into the future. And I just, yeah, I just wonder if there are um, other people in the audience or, or people who are in the play who, who have a sense of whether even having those conversations helps. You know, would it have made some of these scenarios easier had those conversations taken place before and how do we help each other have those conversations earlier? 
Okay. Question out to everybody. Anybody got any thoughts or experience or solutions? That was sort of what I was just thinking. And I was just thinking what I think has really um, made me realize today is how little communication training, understanding of dementia training we offer to carers early days, but then carry it on through that diagnosis and through their process. So they might get some sort of support right at the start, but actually you've got to go back and revisit that as the person's condition changes. And, you know, you could have those conversations about in the early days about, you know, sit down, think about what your future would look like, think about the things that be acceptable to you, but also the, the communication techniques that you were teaching there. Families are just left to work it out themselves, you know, and, and it comes down to their sort of personality types or how their relationships work in their family. They're not taught communication skills like that. Hmm. All the people that we met, and we've met a lot of people, uh, and they're all different and their experiences are different. But one of the things that was so striking, I think, was how incredibly strong they were in the way they related to what was happening to them, which uh, we, we found very affecting. And, and I hope that we've done a bit to honor that. I also feel that, there, you know, there's a sort of, there's a reasonable level of, of sort of like in the room. So, so, so I, I, th I, think, I think they've done okay. So, so maybe you wouldn't mind giving a little bit of clap. I think one of the things that's come out of this is the fact that um, siblings and uh, husbands and wives have got a big part to play in this, and they need cooperation, otherwise there's conflict. And if there's conflict, it makes the person that's uh, suffering the, the disease, it makes their life harder. So if that can be thought about, and uh, decisions made on the whole rather than from one person, it seems to be a better idea. I didn't really know a lot about dementia beforehand, but I thought it was uh, an illness where it just kind of snaps on and it's very, you know, simple, but it's, it's a long process, which I hadn't noticed before. It was easier in one way because of my age to appreciate the difficulties that a dementia patient has. In other ways, it was a trifle frightening. I hope. I don't ever find myself in that situation. But if I do, I will understand it better and I hope be able to handle it better. I've got some mild experience through my own mother and her mother of what dementia can do to a family and how it gets handled. As I say, it, it's it came a bit close to home, so that I was conscious of having to keep a distance. I met quite a lot of quite amazing people doing the uh, project, and a lot of the expectations that I would have had about people with the condition were proved to be wrong. And I think that the variety of people's responses is far wider than I was expecting. I think that the areas of change that the condition makes on people are, are very, very wide. So quite a lot, really. It seemed quite positive that what we were showing was real. Um, and they even said a little uncomfortable. And I think it, it should be a little bit uncomfortable because it is. Yeah. The, the stories that we've seen uh, come from real interviews with people with dementia and the Ideal Project asked Paul to develop dramas based on these real situations. There was a story of discovery going on there uh, how Paul and the actors <laughs> discovered about how to, you know, communicate about people with dementia. What particularly captured my interest was the way that Paul and the actors had really listened, absorbed, processed, and then delivered what we'd spoken to them about, because I've never seen that before. Seldom have I seen it actually taken through to that level of, of, of impact. Mm which I thought mm. was, was amazing. The film, in many ways, captured what Ideal is about as well. 
And, and ideal is, of course, about living as well as possible with dementia. Two or three key points linked to that that I felt came across strongly through the film was the word care. Um, you know, the, the, there was the concept of the word care and there was an interesting discussion between the director and the audience and then this integrated into footage around the rehearsal. I thought that was really good. I thought that really captured the sense of caring. A link to that, this idea of taking control. There was quite a bit of time spent on who has control in the relationships, if you like. Um, and I thought that was that was a really strong point to make. You know, it's part of a journey, I guess, because that's that's what we're trying to convey as well, a journey idea <laughs> of, of people experiencing all aspects that we can convey of, of living with dementia. It, it captures, for me, all of the full picture of dementia, the good and the bad and the ugly. And mm. the good is as important as the bad and the ugly.